Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about this jobs report. A bit of a mixed bag. Uh, we did see that big sizable beat on the, the, the payrolls and, and the gains, but wage growth continues to be quite stagnant. Is this just another case of, of shadow slack, or do you think this is more about structural issues and demographics? Well, Yvonne, I think there is more slack in the U.S. labor market than meets the eye. So, yes, the unemployment rate is very low, 4.4 percent, and actually in the previous month it had fallen to 4.3 percent. But I think there is still hidden slack, and you can see that in the absolute lack of wage pressures. And I think this is something that will have to concern the Fed. At the moment, the Fed is still displaying this belief. It's almost a religious belief in the Phillips curve, namely in the idea that as the unemployment rate comes down, wage growth will accelerate. But the longer it takes, the longer wage growth stays down here, I think the, the, the more problems uh, the Fed will have. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned a bit about the, the, the indications of slack, I want to throw uh, this chart here. It's just G hashtag BTV9067, Yakum, and it does show that we are seeing it uh, to this, when it comes to U6 broad unemployment rate, the underemployment, that actually ticked slightly higher to 8.6%. So there is some indication, as you mentioned, that some slack does remain uh, still in the job market. But is it going to be any indication for the Fed to give some pause, Yakum? I mean, we're still seeing some dissent among policymakers when it comes to inflation, and we're, we continue to see the, the Fed seems to be overlooking some of the data points of late. Yeah, I think um, the Fed so far has argued that the downturn in inflation that we saw over the last three months is temporary, that it is caused by one-off factors. But we actually think that uh, this is not just a temporary phenomenon. It's pretty broad-based. Uh, the turn down in inflation. So I think this will start to affect Fed thinking. At the moment, they still seem to be determined to hike rates one more time this year and to start the balance sheet runoff. Um, but I think as time, time goes by, as we see inflation below target, uh, as we get closer to year end, we actually think that the Fed will eventually not hike rates one more time this year. Um, so it's really the inflation data that will uh, be decisive for Fed action or non-action. So what about, you know, financial conditions they continue to loosen? We see this focus, it seems like, on financial stability more so than the data of late. Do you think that that could actually be something that the Fed is maybe making some type of policy mistake in and focusing on these areas more so than what's going on in the economy? Yeah, I think there is a risk here. So I think, f for one thing, the Fed is right to have drawn some lessons from the last cycle when they hiked rates too slowly in 2004 to 2006, and they helped to pump up a big credit bubble. So I think that's in the back of their mind. That's one reason why they are determined to go ahead now, even though inflation is so low. Um, but the risk, of course, is that they are cementing inflation expectations below target. Inflation expectations, whether you look at surveys or you look at market-based measures like break-even inflation rates, they are very low. They have turned down recently. They are below target. And so the risk here is that the Fed, in their attempt to steer financial conditions and to look at financial stability, that they cement inflation expectations below target. And that may come back to haunt them once we get the next downturn. Right. Because the lower inflation is when that next downturn hit, the bigger is the risk that we end up in a deflationary situation. Uh, Jakob, uh, it's Betty here in uh, New York. I want to pull up another chart here that I think just illustrates everything that you've just discussed uh, on wage pressures and what's going on in, uh, uh, in the employment market, and that is uh, G hashtag uh, BTV1771, which, you know, this aqua line here uh, it, you know, just shows you why that labor force participation rate goes up, why the unemployment rate's going down. People not in the labor force are going, are jumping in, going to get, trying to get employed. Uh, and that a number of people who are already not in the labor force and staying unemployed is actually going down uh, and continues to go down. So, uh, yes, there you go. That, you know, that explains what we've been talking about. I'm kind of curious when we, when we talk about wage pressures, uh, what is normal wage pressure for an economy like this, right? We know we're hovering here at around 2%, 2, 2.5%. 2 what, is, what, is, uh, what is considered robust wage pressure right now? Well, I think uh, you would have to look at, first of all, where do you want inflation to be over the medium term? The Fed has told us 2%, so that's your price component of the, uh, of the wage pressures. And then uh, the other factor that will determine wage growth uh, is productivity growth. Now, productivity growth has been very low over the last five years. It's averaged only a little more than half a percent. On an underlying basis, productivity growth is probably over the medium term around 1%. So if you add up those two, 1% productivity 
plus 2% medium term inflation, then you get to um, a normal pace of wage growth of 3%. Now, currently, on the most recent measures, you know, we are at around 2.5%, so we're still falling half a percent short.